Within the eternal region. I have dire need of the arisen strength. Please, sir, will you lend me your aid? You have my eternal thanks. You speak now to a shadow of sorts. My flesh resides elsewhere. I would take you there now, if it please you. Were it possible, I would not send you off with so meager an explanation. But I fear I myself do not know it better. My past, my aims in coming here, all of it is lost as in a fog. All I know is that I, like you, was called here, and am bound to stay. I sensed you in the distance and called to you for help. I knew somehow, as by instinct, that you could grant the wish of the one who dwells below. Just as I know my role here is to aid you in that pursuit. I am versed in the pure affection of cursed artifacts. Should you in your travels find such ensorcelled objects, pray, bring them to me. The procedure requires but a few rift crystals, and it is a service I would gladly tender. I shall aid you however I can, for therein lies my own path forward. If there is aught I can do, say it. Pray, take care. My hope is that I may rediscover myself and recall my true purpose here. I shall aid your journey in any way I can and pray that our goals both lie together. Tis slow work, but I've been endeavoring to remember more about myself. It seems I, too, was one link to the worm by fate. In my questing, I came to this place, yet... the will of some other entity took hold of me and bound me here. The words I spoke begging your aid were not mine, but theirs. Beyond that is still a haze. In my earliest memories, I am standing here on this jetty. I hear a voice. It entreated me to save someone. Upon hearing her words, I fell into a terrible confusion. It felt as if... as if that voice had been my own. The truth remains that if I am to save him, I need your help, Arisen. What am I meant to do here, truly? Oh, forgive me. Tis not a query you could answer when I myself know not. Older memories are bubbling to the surface. Though they show a past which is not my own. I recall fighting. I was in the service of a great warrior. And together we overcame many trials. Her ill-deserved end was a crushing blow to me as well. My soul was shattered. Much as I then came to shatter his. What recollections I have seem so vivid. And yet all else beyond them is a haze. I fear there is little more I can tell you about the one I brought you here to aid. Tis a mad request, I know. I scarce know who I am, let alone this other soul. And yet at my core, it is their fate, not my own, that weighs more heavily upon me. Only a stronger will, a will as yours, can bring him peace. You are arisen, like as me, chosen of the worm and led by it, or a sacrificial lamb at the altar of its cruel dogma. Which telling is the truer, I know not. I ask you, is that the fate you've chosen of your own will? A foolish question. Whatever outward circumstances may act upon a person, their fate is, in the end, a thing of their own making. That holds as true for the Arisen as any other. I feel my soul is an amalgam of my own and that of someone else. As two halves of a single whole. Strangely, the thought causes me no distress. You've met him. He was my master, though it was a hundred lifetimes past. When he 
came to face the dragon, he was given a choice too hard, too cruel to make. He could live with neither answer, and so he offered only a curse in reply. Those words saw him become the monster he is now. In granting him the cursed form he chose, the worm had held to its bargain. And I was the prize. I was his pawn, and his beloved besides. Help me! Please, you must free him. bond that led her spirit to me and through me she called to you to one whose strength of will outmatched the master of this place arisen or no my own will seems a guttering candle to your son i shall remain here a while i think to contemplate the meaning of our meeting here i must believe my claiming this body my calling you here held some meaning Pray, permit me to help you now as before. I would dearly welcome the sense of purpose. That monstrous thing yet lives. The arisen who brought this place into being is gone. But perhaps some other force yet remains which fueled his long grudge. You know of them, do you not? The worm? The seneschal? The roles they play in the bargain they offer? It is not a choice to be made lightly. And either path holds its own pain. But what if both paths in equal part meant betraying that which you held dearest and forsaking all you'd believed? A man can pick the lesser of two evils, but tis an impossible dilemma when those evils are one and the same. Yet pick he must. For indecision and escape invite evils far worse. I do not believe that seeking one's own death is ever the proper course. Tis only effort and the unbending will to press on that sees ill circumstance improved. In death, we can change nothing. Yet, there are rare times, I believe, when the destruction of the body is the path to further progress. I do not make light of your decision, nor mean to imply it was one easily or painless made. But through it, you have come to live anew, to meet me here. A denizen of another world. It was because your will shone brighter, proved stronger than any other, that you reached your end. And for that same cause, you stand here now. Why do you fight, sir? To ward the ones you love from evil? To claim authority over the land as conqueror? Tis a question all warriors, arisen or nay, must ever ask themselves. Lest somewhere in the sea of blood and the seductions of strength, we come to find fighting has become the end and not the means. Even for one with will enough to earn the dragon's mark, that siren's song is fierce and strong. I... I died once. Here, in this place. It was scarce a fortnight after I was first lured in. Each day brought new losses. My pawn was slain, then gradually my store of curatives dwindled. I was surrounded, body battered and broken by dark and powerful magics. As death approached, I lifted my gaze to see the stars one final time. Yet it was not death that engulfed me then, but a strange light, far brighter than any fire of the Empyrean. Past that, my memory fails. 
the meaning of the Arisen's charge, of the quest to reclaim one's heart. The more I think upon it all, the murkier it grows. Dies this one. A week, perhaps. A favorite game of mine, guessing the lifespan of those who enter these halls. Nothing personal, mind. And rest easy, friend. Three score guesses here now have yet to hit the mark once. Someone's looking for me. Then this pit is old to stranger folk than even I'd imagined. An honest mistake, most like. I've been down here half an age, and not once have I known anyone to come calling. Now, will you have a look? I'll see you don't regret it. No dying now. This place is full to the gills with scraps and materials unseen in the world I knew outside. An alchemist's paradise, this. The smithy's work I do is a product of endless hours, trial and error. But it's time I don't begrudge. My little obsession's half the reason for my memories. Could be. The other half is running into strange ones like you, friend. You've been hearing voices since coming to this place, friend. Echoes of the dead, those. Even the least of them what's fallen here was an arisen in a former life. Seems their wills were too strong to end with the body, and so they remain. Obstinate things. It's a blessing they do more than just grumble and grouse. I'd go mad. Helping others is the Maker's work, friend. Why not leave it to him and busy yourself with staying alive? I'm not the sort to take directions, besides. I'll go where I please. You see, I like in that. When I was made a risen, I asked myself just what sort of role it was the world had handed me. From the very start, I'd no interest in chasing after my heart. Useless thing. If eternity was mine to pass as I saw fit, I'd pass it doing what I liked. That was my answer. And what of you? You the type to buy into talk of duty and fate and all that? I've stopped thinking about it, truth be told. Like as not, there is no I was an apothecary before becoming an arisen. Made my coin mixing potions, fusing reagents into new compounds, new elements, alchemy in a word. This place is a trove of herbs and ores found nowhere else. Nowhere natural. I've seen gold and jewels enough to rot my eyes. But the treasures this place hides will keep me entertained for years to come. Where do the beasts here come from? You ever think on that, friend? We're cut off from the world. Worlds, whichever. It's not but a risen in ponds what come here. And that's when it hit me. What if they're what's left of those fallen heroes? What happens to a soul bottled up in a place like this? Some find peace and effort in their regrets in stone, but others... What if they just rot? Rot? And become darker things? Hmm. <laughs> Just an idle theory, mind. Mayhap we'll find out when I die and join their ranks. If I run into you then, I'll expect a proper greeting. The wandering life is sweet enough once you've grown accustomed to it. I'll speak no ill of others' dreams and duties, but I found my own oppressive and a terrible bore. Well, this is a surprise. Can you just come and go as you please, then? Everyone come to this place was lost to the world outside, myself included. Oh well, that's the exception what proves the rule, or so they say. My trade, isn't it obvious? <laughs> no, I don't suppose it is. I'm a wandering scholar of sorts, and an arisen besides, though I may not look like either. 
In truth, I've left the worm hunting racket. A dangerous pursuit, and the rewards on me, yeah. But speaking of remuneration, I'll fain help you in your travels, if you furnish the coin. The poor fools drawn into this place all come singing the same tune by and large. Heroes, everyone, the deluded fools. Sold on dreams of fixing this blighted world by kings and lords with their own agendas. It's that or the knightly types with their lofty lust for strength, eager to wet their blades with any foul creature they find. Or thank you to leave me out of either pile. And which one are you then? What is it you hope to find here? If it's fame or fortune, pray, look elsewhere, friend. You have that luxury. You must be well bored of your aunt to be wasting time in here. Or well confident. To look at you, I'd wager you've seen it, aye? Had your tussle with the dragon, then espied the grand scheme of the world. How it's built. Then you'll know the wisdom of leaving it all be. Have you ever had calls to miss your heart? Steer clear of cliffs and beasts beyond your means, and you can live forever. If wandering the countryside has lost its charm, take up residence here. I'd welcome a drinking partner. You can feel it, can't you? This place is wrought from the will of some creator. I don't mean the maker, mind. I keep no truck with the faith. Now, this place is like a memory given form. We're guests in someone's imaginary world, you and I. Else rabbits in their snare. This little island and what lies beneath it are a pretty mess, don't you think? I've done my share of exploring, and all of this place appears in no map or text I've ever seen. Even the halls that link one chamber to the next are mad. The work of some diabolic magic, like as not. A place so steeped in rancor just begs for conquest, doesn't it? Gets my juices flowing. Forgive my nattering on. It's not that I'm bored exactly. Just newcomers as game as you are a rare treat. Clawing your way through the dark for days on end takes its toll. Often is not. It's not the beasts that get you, but the crushing despair. A man can be plagued by the voice of doubt anywhere, but down here, the whispers are real. You've heard them, sure, by now. Voices waxing fatalistic about the uselessness of it all. I can scarce imagine the sort of grudge this Isle's creator must bear against the Arisen. Still, less what I've done to earn my place here. I'm a simple wanderer. Keep to myself. I've no illusions of entitlement as an Arisen. I've earned no one's respect and adulation, nor do I crave it. But neither, surely, have I earned such retribution. I wasn't the first to come here. It was a colorful cast already when I arrived. An old man, half dead by the time I met him. The other half didn't take long. Another was a woman. Ah, she'd have been a real gem, save that over-serious nature. By the end, she treated me with the same contempt she would a beast. Had she been freer with her charms around beasts, she might not have wound up serving as their supper. Still, a shame. A simple luck that I've survived this long. I've no illusions on that count. One look around, and it's clear we're rats in a trap here, friend. But then, I'm a strange sort. This sort of welcome puts me more at ease than any hospitality. Even in this forsaken hill, there's rift stones about to call for palms. Many are in disrepair, but the right price will buy them back to usefulness, it seems. Convenient thing, that. Mayhap this place is kindred to the other world the Pond Legion speak of. By the way, it's a thoughtful provision, I. Right? I'll have to thank our host, should I ever meet him. It's been many a year since I parted ways with my heart. 
I can't say as I'm missing much, for I still mortal. Being stranded on this island hell might have caused me some bother. Slaying beasts holds no allure for me, and immortal or not, I've no time to waste on that which bores me. I'm content to spend eternity fleeing. That is, until I've need of a fame, or a wing, or some such for a compound I aim to make. In that case, make a pity the beasties. I'm strong as the worm when I can be bored. You're far from the first new face I've come across here. Most come bearing invitations, but I've turned a lot of them down. No common cause. They fight to be quit of this place, while I find it rather cozy. So I send them off with a bit of advice, worry less, and enjoy more. The fact that I haven't seen any of them again means either they got their wish or got dead. By the way, I might hold my breath for a reunion. Slay one pack of beasts, and another comes to pick their bones. Like as not a nastier breed than the ones before. There are times fighting brings more danger than safety. I've lost good ponds to those scavengers. Damn near lost my head to a few. If you aim to kill the creatures here, be mindful of the where and the when. Don't get in over your head. Ever stop to ponder just what manner of place this is, friend? I say it's certain. That no such island existed off the land I came from. No record names it. Though you need look no further than the links between this cavern's halls to know aught is amiss. Nature bears no fruit so strange. We're guests in a world fabricated by someone or something. Seems our host has a taste for hunting arisen. Best we were thankful we haven't all simply been cast into the abyss directly. Either he's the sporting sort, or he lacks a surety to his purpose. Perhaps he's simply waiting for someone like you. A feisty challenger to come and unseat him. Rather cozy, this place. Save the perpetual darkness. Sent our host to his grave, have you? <laughs> Remind me never to cross you. Still, seems these walls aren't about to come crumbling down for want of his presence. Mayhap they've taken root one material plane. Tis idle conjecture, and a precious little import either way. If you've the need and the coin, I've the wares. This place is without its master, and yet the beasts persist within it unabated. Strange that. Oh well, I'll do as I will. They can do the same. I'm hardly fit to say this, given how I've set up shop here. But have you really nowhere else to be? No affairs more pressing. I doubt you find any real answers, coven up the creatures of these dark halls. You feel that? Something grievous dark is stirring within the bowels of the earth below us. It bears the stink of the dragon. Worse, perhaps. Just what have you gone and woken up? <laughs>